What's up, everybody, and welcome to another Angle of Pursuit podcast, your fantasy football, sports betting, and NASCAR home here at FakePickskin.com. I'm your host, Kyle Robert. You follow me on Twitter at NotoriousKRO. Uh, with me once again, it's Brian Twining. What's up, Brian? What's up, Kyle? I, every time you say that, and NASCAR home, it just makes me smile to think that we are still doing NASCAR previews here. And, you know, it's become one of my favorite things to watch on the weekend. To just kind yeah, of have yeah. on in the background. I love it. Uh, I've really enjoyed really diving into it this year. Um, it's been cool, obviously. Like it was one of the few sports when everything else was kind of shut down. So it, it gave me a lot more time to kind of figure this out. And obviously, with football coming, we're doing a ton of that content and getting our 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 brains mentally prepped. But when I need a break, when I want something else, I mean, obviously, right now, like if you're a sports fan, like you're just you're loving life, especially. Like you do and living that work. I'm I'm living that work from home lifestyle. So like hockey's on, basketball's on, football will be on, enjoying NASCAR. Um, obviously we won't get college in the fall, but that's fine. There's 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 enough to go around. We got a fall masters. Like I'm I'm just living the life. But yeah, it's cool to add NASCAR to to the to the rotation. Um, enjoying some of these uh double stops, like Obviously, there's in a normal year, they do like a kind of spring one and then a fall race, same track, a little bit different. So, you know, but um, so today we're going to preview the, uh, the Saturday race. We are going to talk some Drydeen 311, which is the Saturday race. I, I'm telling you, they're just making up <laughs> stuff at this point. Like we need we need to get on the phone with NASCAR and see what we can do because they're running out of sponsors. So they're just making up words and like just just figuring it out. Uh, if you are enjoying the content, if you like what we're doing, make sure you mash that thumbs up. Make sure you hit subscribe. It really does do a lot for us. Helps get our content in the hands of other people. Uh, makes more people watch our show. The then means more more content we can produce for you. So please please do us that favor uh, and, and do that while you're here. Um, but as I mentioned, Brian, we'll talk Saturday's race. Obviously, same track for Sunday. Um, We'll see what the lines look like kind of after that race and kind of what how they adjust. But um, I feel like there's going to be some opportunity for sure. Um, but we'll talk Saturdays. We'll talk uh, all of our favorite options. But let's start like we always do. We're inside 10 to 1. Um, I guess we, this is either going to work out great for us or going to work out terrible because we're both we're both riding the uh, party Marty Truex 4 to 1 um bet for our favorite option like it, in terms of his track record at this track in terms of his recent form like it it's all setting up for him to to have a big race maybe saturday maybe sunday maybe he's the guy that goes double double back to back like kevin harvick did at michigan i believe uh over his last six races at dover a win five top fives over his last six overall five top fives dude's running well going to a track where he traditionally runs well, like I, I see why we both landed on the same target. Yeah. I think Marty Truex has kind of taken over for Eric Amarola, a guy who we were kind of backing for consecutive yeah. weeks as that, like the hottest driver on the circuit right now, he's got five consecutive third place finishes in, in 2020. I mean, the dude has been right there over the last few weekends of, you know, finishing first. And even this last weekend at the Daytona road course where there was no history. It was going based off of, you know, road course racing history. He and Chase Elliott were probably the strongest vehicles the, the entirety of the day. And it was another race where he could have just as easily won where he wound up finishing in the top three. So I think that's kind of why you and I are both boxed up together here with Truex as being our favorite driver this weekend over at Dover with his recent success there. He's got two victories, which is tied with Kevin Harvick. Uh, for the most there over the last 10. He's also led the second most laps at Dover over the last 10 races only to Kevin Harvick, who, I mean, this is a pretty ridiculous statistic, but Harvick has over 350 more laps led than Martin Truex here at this race. So, I mean, Harvick really dominates here, but, yeah, you know, Plus Truex... 50? I mean, uh, I, I mean, four to one isn't... It, isn't any, yeah, I like, guess I guess it is, both right there. It isn't any more enticing, but you know, I just it just, I just feels think so he's much due. better when he's like the <laughs> second name. Like, yeah, exactly, exactly. It's so hard uh, to back the favorite just yeah. with how we've seen so many different things happen at these NASCAR races that 
picking a guy at the top of the field to win the race, it, it's just – it seems almost impossible to do. Even though you went two consecutive races with picking the winner, um, you know, it, it was it was crazy. It's, yeah. it, it's a difficult thing to, to do. Yeah, I mean, even like we could talk about last week's race a little bit because it was frustrating. Obviously, a brand new track. We're trying to figure it out on the fly. Uh, Clint Boyer was sitting there in the top five, and then all of a sudden the restart at the very end kind of – killed those dreams um uh, before we move on we should give uh, a quick shouts uh to og who not only hit he hit denny hamlin for top five he hit party marty truex top three and jimmy johnson for top 10 so that's a nice little nice little uh sunday uh he's, and been, he's been hot og dude, fire straight fire uh and then landon uh over had chase elliott for the win so apparently i was a, a week ahead <laughs> um, I, I jumped the gun a little bit, um, that, but that, you know, it, it really does show you kind of why top three, top five bets are, are so intriguing because as much as we want to be able to pick the winner, um, being able to have a little more flexibility is nice. It's basically like, instead of betting an underdog, um, you know, that, that plus 300 on or plus 250 on the money line, uh, in a basketball game is really tempting, but if you get those six points and that team is competitive, like you think, and all of a sudden the other team hits a three at the buzzer to win by one, instead of not cashing at all, you're, you're, you're making some money. So, you know, I, I don't hate the idea of hedging a little bit. And maybe if you were going to put 50 bucks uh, on, on, on a couple drivers, maybe, you know, 30 on, on the top five and then 20 on a win or something like that, kind of spreading out your, your risk is, is good and then if they win you're you're making all kinds of money and obviously yeah uh you know it, it would be nicer to have 50 bucks on an eight to one than 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 20 bucks on eight to one and and you know whatever on a, pl a plus 200 but and um, to the, to that point like i and then also how i was saying like there's just so much uncertainty in these races we saw martin truex last week get a speeding penalty while leaving pit row where he was you know, he, he had to drop down pretty far back in the mm -hmm. pack and he still wound up finishing in the top three, which is not something yeah. you could have expected. So it's not like picking these guys, even with their history at these tracks is easy either. No, but it was nice to see that like he was one of the, if not the most dominant driver Oh yeah, uh, at that race. So it's nice that when your head tells you something and then it transitions to something on the track. It's it's nice. And I bet if you had Martin Truex in your DFS lineups, you like seeing him get kicked to the back <laughs> and passing all those cars and racking up those points. So uh, totally, totally appreciate that. Uh, let's keep it rolling. Let's go a little deeper down like we like to go. Um, I'm going to go Jimmy Johnson this week. It's a little risky. I'm, I'm not going to lie because this is obviously a guy that he's in the back end of his career, like kind of making his final hurrah. Hasn't been awesome uh but was really good last week and and in terms of his history at this track like it's insane like he's raced here 36 times has 11 wins 17 top fives 25 top tens like the, the dude has just been comfortable and you know it, it his recent form hasn't been quite that dominant uh but he has a win he has two top fives he's four top tens uh for a guy that has been kind of struggling to get down the stretch obviously coming off a good race at daytona uh, road course I, I like going to him like obviously 20 to 1 is is great um but you can get him at 5 to 1 for a top 3 you can get him at 3 to 1 for a top 5 i love i love those like i i would rather bet jimmy johnson for top 5 at 3 to 1 than truex or kevin harvick to win the race Maybe that's crazy, but <laughs> I feel like having a little extra wiggle room for a little bit better of a price. Um, I, I like that. Yeah, no, he, he he's a guy who I also am. I'm kind of on his tail here, and he'll probably be somebody that I place in my daily this weekend. You know, looking at his most recent success at Dover, like you said, he's got all those victories. He's been pretty good here over his career. Uh, removing his 2018 race, the second race there where he finished pretty close to last, yeah. he's finishing in the top 10 pretty consistently here. And looking at this most current season, he's just outside the playoff standings right now where he and like William Byron and I think it's William Byron and Matt DiBendetto are just in front of him. So 
Jimmy Johnson's going to need to finish really strong here at Dover at a track that he's finished really well at if he wants to sneak back into the playoff race. And this is a guy who was a perennial, you know, trophy winner every year for he, he, he won the cup series six straight years, I believe it was. So this guy is not, he's, he's not shy and he's not unfamiliar with winning. So if we are looking at somebody who's further down in the, in the odds to potentially win here or get that, that good, that good finish, it is a Jimmy Johnson. Yeah. And he's starting six this week, which I love, like I knowing that he's going to start near the front is, is always a good sign. Uh, you know, and as long as his car doesn't, you know, explode he should be in that top 10 top five conversation most of the day so uh, i'm a big fan of him and and kind of having one last hurrah uh, at this track and like you uh, said he's coming off his best finish in like 15 races so yep 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 running strong uh, push a little hard get in the playoff um go out and because i believe this is his final season um on, on the on the cup series so uh let's go a little deeper and let's talk some Alex Bowman, who is at 25 to one this week. Yeah, you know, Alex Bowman, I was looking at him. I was he's not somebody who's been lighting the world on fire here in 2020. He's kind of one of the younger, younger superstars that's kind of trying to make his name for himself here in NASCAR. He hasn't done too well in 2020. He's, you know, he's coming off a pretty decent finish. He finished 12th last week. But looking at his Dover, his his Dover results, his first four races, uh, mind you, he's only ran six times here. His first two years racing at Dover, he did not finish good. He was like in the back end of the 20s. But the last two years or the last two races here, he finished second and third. So we're, if I'm looking at most recent success and a guy who is trying to make a name for himself, kind of become that younger generation of like newer, newer young dr- superstars in, in the sport, Alex Bowman is one of those guys. And with a win on his on his belt this year he's actually like i think he's eighth in the playoff standings right now so he's kind of cemented himself in the playoff race but you always want to try to move up the rankings there and if i'm looking at a guy who's going to be running near the top 10 and have a good a good finish here to continue that kind of propulsion up into further up into the standings it is a bowman who is starting i think he's starting in the sixth row he's starting 11th so he's got a good starting point here for this race at a race that like I said, the last two times he finished top three. So I think that's the reason why I like Bowman. It's a good number, 25 to one. If you take a shot, a nice five spot, 10 bucks, maybe. I mean, that'd be a great return. And then you go and you piggyback that with a even a top 10. He's, you know, minus 118 there. If you piggyback a $5 bet for a win or say, you know, 20 on the top 10, you're still going to be kind of coming out even. And for daily lineups starting – and that sixth row, the potential for him to finish in the top 10 and race near the top like that is good. He's a good, like safe floor guy. Yeah. Um, before we move on to your final pick down the board, I want to talk Brad, Brad Kozlowski for a little bit. Um, in terms of recent form, he's like, he's been running really well, obviously over his last six has a win, has three top fives, four top tens. His track record, if you just look at kind of outrights, it it doesn't look great at this track. Uh, But he's led 213 laps over his last six races, which puts him sixth overall. And with the names like Denny Hamlin and Chase Elliott, Martin Truex, uh, Kevin Harvick, you know, so guys that have traditionally won at this track have top fives of, you know, stacking them up. Uh, Is his recent form combined with a guy who we've seen – not necessarily finish well, but run well during his time. Is it like, I mean, we're looking at numbers like 12 to one for an outright. We're looking at three to one for a top three. Um, Does that interest you at all? I mean, just going based off of most recent success, like you said, he he's kind of right up there with Truex where like recent form has been one of the top drivers. And, you know, he's, he's a name who consistently every single season is a guy who, even to us novices and beginning NASCAR fans would recognize. So he's been, he's been racing really well over the last few races. He even, even with the lack of success at the current track, the guy, he's a good enough driver to be able to make up for that. And his team to be able to make, you know, uh, make some changes to the car, especially with this being a two race weekend. We could see him kind of test it out on Saturday and come out on Sunday and light, light the track on fire. So he's a guy who I, I would look into. 
we we looked at Al- Almarola and for a similar situation where he was just running so well at that point that it was worth looking at and I think he fin- that was the one where he finished top three and and finished backwards with him as Rick. Uh, <laughs> yep. But yeah, I, I think I think I, I am uh, looking that way as well. Um, and I think you know to your point, I think maybe looking at seeing how he does Saturday and then potentially looking at Sunday. Maybe go top five for Saturday and then look to see if he'll win on Sunday. Um, let's hit your last guy before we get ready to get out of here, and that's William Byron, forty to one. Uh, talk to me about him. So Byron, he's another one of those young drivers. He's driving that very familiar 24 car, similar colors as what Jeff Gordon used to race as a different sponsor. Um, so he kind of stood out to me when I first got back into the NASCAR this season. I was like, oh, that looks really familiar. But uh, no, I mean, he, he's ran four times here at Dover. His average finish is about 13th or 14th. Um, he had a top 10 here last season. And at 40 to one, I mean, that's a great, that's another great value if you want to place his small small change on that for a potential win he's another guy he's starting in the i think it's the fourth fourth row here let's see he's finished starting eighth for this race so again he's starting in the top 10 for a guy who has decent success at this track so he's more than likely to kind of stay in that range for the duration of the race and he's actually plus money for a top 10 finish so i i think that's pretty good bet and for another guy for you know, t- going back to Jimmy Johnson and him kind of looking on, he's on the outside looking into the playoffs. William Byron is just made it into the playoff picture last week with his finish. And he has to continue that success to, to stave off the moves by DiBendetto and Jimmy Johnson. So I'm looking at a guy with a good number who has to drive really aggressively and get a good finish here in order to stay in the playoff picture. Yeah, no, I, I think those are all great points. Uh, the one thing I will say is I won't be betting Daniel Suarez, no matter how much the numbers <laughs> tell me. Nope. Um, but looking at his number where you can get him at eight to one for a top 10, uh, you can get him at a hundred, uh, where is he? 80 to one for a top three. <laughs> I'm not going there again. <laughs> just looking at his he's 2020 season. 20, he's just so bad, but like. If he's this, if he's not normally this bad, and his numbers at this track don't normally dick are like really impressive. Like, if you look at his last six races, he's the fourth best average finish. He has a top five. He has four top tens. Four of the last six. That, that's his. That's his rack record at this track. And I think it has a lot to do with the car. I mean, kind of like must. that was mentioned to us. He went from. Hold on, I'm I'm going back to him really like, quick. But like. I still like I, the car can be a lot, but like I, I, I he went from he, Stuart Haas racing to he is now with some some crew that I've never. So he's eight. So eight to one, like he's eight to one, uh, ten bucks. Gount, Gount brothers. Mm. I feel I feel like even the ten bucks would just be a donation to the to the book <laughs> that you're I've playing. Been doing on. Enough, I, I, I've been doing enough of that lately. I don't need to. I don't need to help them out anymore. Uh, uh, okay, Brian, it's time we gotta get the people what they want. Best bet time. Where are we going? Oh man, you know what? I think Maybe. it's my turn to predict the victory, and I'm going Woo! Marty Truex four to one to take yeah. take home the belt here. I like it. I like it a lot. Uh, I'm going to go Jimmy Johnson top five at three to one. All these odds are per DraftKings Sportsbook, by the way. So if they want to drop the bag. That would be fantastic. But uh, yeah, I, I, I love I love Truex outright. I think a Truex outright and a Jimmy Johnson top five is what my card's going to look like this week. Not going to go too crazy. Not going to go too wild. But uh, I like both those quite a bit. Uh, but un- in- enjoy the race Saturday. Um, a lot of all the information we've laid out uh, is stuff that should apply to Sunday's race as well. So if you are watching this late and you want to dive into Sunday's race, um, definitely has uh, the same, the same odds or uh, the odds will change, but the drivers we like the information we gave out, it's all, it's all consistent. So enjoy the weekend of racing and we'll talk to you guys next week for Brian Twining. I'm Kyle Robert. Peace.